Hey there, I'm Consortus with Not Consumed Ministries, where we help families grow in faith so they are not consumed by life. I'm so excited that you joined me today to talk about social studies. I'm going to share with you my basic plan for teaching social studies in your homeschool, as well as some tricks and tips that I've learned along the way. Before we get there, we have to do the most important part, and that is to have a vision for why we're teaching this subject to begin with. Every year I challenge myself to sit down and open the Bible and decide exactly why I'm teaching every subject based on God's Word. I record this in my organized homeschool planner. You can get a copy too at store.notconsumed.com. I'm going to read to you what I put for social studies. However, I encourage you to dig in the Bible yourself and write down your own reasons. First, to learn and appreciate God's story. That's His story. That's really what history is all about to learn from past mistakes, and then to love other cultures like God does. Let me give you my five basic tips for teaching social studies. Number one, worldview, 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 worldview. <laughs> Do I make my point? <laughs> Everything is taught through a particular lens. Everything you read has an agenda. We need to make sure more than ever that history is written from a Christian perspective, that it's written about God. Remember, it's his story. We need to make sure it reflects the truth as it is written in his word. I would encourage you to make sure you look up the author of whatever curriculum you choose. Make sure you've read the worldview statements in the book and the about statements of the authors, anything you can get to find out where they're coming from because it will show up in that book, I promise. I have made that mistake before. The very first curriculum I used was a very popular one because all of my friends were using it and even a co-op that I was attending had recommended it and I very quickly learned this was not the worldview that I wanted to share with my kids. Number two, reading and math need to remain the core. We talked about this when we talked about science, but I'll remind you again here. Social studies while it's not an extra or an elective, is not your primary core. You wanna make sure math and reading are going well, that there's no hurdles there. If they're not, take a step back and focus on the reading and math and don't worry about social studies, it can wait. Number three, history comes to life through living books and field trips. Try not to neglect these in exchange for a neatly packaged curriculum. Oh, believe me. I know it's tempting. I'm all about independent learning and that's a lot easier when I have a neatly packaged curriculum to give my kids. Those things are okay and I advocate for them. Just make sure you have plenty of real living books that your kids can read and field trip and experiences throughout the year that will help them experience history in a real living way. Number four, never let reading become a hurdle for social studies. Make modifications as necessary. I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we start to talk about high school. Number five, we already said that social studies is the study of God's story. That means we need to make sure we're studying things like missions and countries and cultures and communities and how we can better love them. Most of the curriculum out there focuses on historical facts, and those are good and important, but we want to make sure we encompass all of that. Okay, let's start with early elementary. This is my favorite age. I highly recommend that you stay away from curriculum for social studies in the early elementary years. It's just not needed, and it's going to add one more thing to your plate. Read lots of living books together, go on field trips, explore things. I also recommend that you spend a lot of time talking about missions and cultures and your community. Learn about firefighters. That's part of social studies. Learn about the jobs and the things that people do in your community. All through early elementary, I simply keep a notebook for each child. And every time we read a book or go on a field trip or explore something interesting, we will draw or write a little bit about it. That's a simple way to remember what you've learned and record it without taking the fun out of social studies. Another thing that we really love is the timeline song from Classical Conversation. I was introduced to this many years ago when we did Classical Conversations. And although we don't participate in a group anymore, we still love to sing this song. We just pop it in when we're driving. We sing it every now and then. We don't make it something that I insist that they memorize, but it's really, really good for them. As they get older, they remember the words and the phrases and the events that they've learned through this song. It's really cool. Next up is late elementary. Now this is 
third through fifth grade, at this age, it's still really cool not to do a curriculum. If you'd like to stick with that plan, it's perfect. If you'd like to dig a little bit deeper, I have a few suggestions. Our family's favorite is To Every Nation. This is a study that I wrote because we love to study missions and missionaries, and we couldn't find a lot of resources on that. We loved reading the Christian Heroes Then and Now series. We fell in love with them, and we wanted just a little bit more. If your child is able to read the novel, go for it. If not, you can always do it as a read aloud. The notebook that goes with it is light on purpose. For each missionary, we have a synopsis, a study page, a geography lesson, a timeline, and then a Bible lesson. We wrap all of that up with some copy work. All of my kids have done this study and absolutely loved it. In fact, one of them has even done it twice. This year, my fifth grader is going to be using Masterbook's America's Story. Now, we've chosen this for a couple of reasons. One, we're planning a trip to Washington, D.C., and I want to make sure he's ready and he has some of the facts and information that he might need in order to go. I also love how independent Masterbooks can be, and at the same time, I love how beautiful the pages are and how simple it is. I'm all about keeping it simple. Cover the things, but we don't have to go overboard. And I love how Masterbooks does that. Okay, middle school. There's a lot of awesome choices for middle school. Just like science, I highly recommend you let your child pursue something they're interested in. Letting your kids pursue things that they're interested in gives them the opportunity to love and have a passion for history. You would be amazed what the freedom of choice does for a kid. When they get to high school, they're gonna have to work within your state requirements. My son, Nathan, is gonna be in the seventh grade this year and he chose Master Books World History One because he wanted to study ancient history. <laughs> I love that he wants to study ancient history. It's one of my favorite time periods as well. So this is really cool for me. Other great options for middle school would be Mystery of History and Knotgrass History. Also, Beautiful Feet books make some amazing literature-based history. My daughter Leah did horse history when she was in middle school and she loved it. So again, give your kids the freedom to pursue those interests. All right, when you get to high school, you may be limited by what your state requires. Be sure you look it up. You need to know exactly what is required. Most states and colleges require an American history or U.S. history credit, a government and an economics credit that's half and half, and then something else. Most of the time you have the freedom to choose between world geography or um, world history. Be sure you check with your state requirements before you decide. For American history, our favorite, hands down, is Knockgrass. We love the stories, we love the way it's written, we love the way it's organized, and we love that it ties in beautifully with an English credit, American literature, and a Bible credit. You can't beat that. My oldest did both world history and American history with Not Grass and couldn't have been happier. This year, Lee is going to be doing her government and economics credits. She's chosen master books, um, civics and the constitution. They have DVD lectures as well as their traditional um, books for that. For economics, she's going to be doing R.C. Sproul's Economics for Everyone. I'm super excited about that. Let's talk about Mystery of History. Another favorite, I highly, highly recommend Level 4 of Mystery of History. Rachel's going to be doing that one this year. Level 4 is contemporary world history from about World War II on. This is so crucial for our kids today. They need to know this stuff. They need to understand socialism. They need to understand the effects of some of the things that we see going on in our country today. I highly recommend it. Rachel is going to take that one this year. However, she's not going to do it in the traditional book sense. Remember I said, don't let reading be a hurdle. For her, she really needs to focus reading time in the reading time and not let reading be the hurdle for her history lessons. So she's actually going to do the video lectures. You can find those on the Mystery of History website and we'll link to them for you too. They also have a live class that you can sign up for with grades and a weekly lecture with the author of Mystery of History, Linda Hobart, which I think is super fun. Okay, that's it for social studies. Thank you so much for joining me. I pray this was an encouragement for you as you seek to teach your kids his story. Isn't that amazing? I love it. See you next time.